Hello from Dresden Flughafen train station. Today I'm heading back to the States on my first of three legs to Newark. Since I'm rather early for my flight, and I'm also considered a quote unquote young traveler that is under 18 years of age, one of the airport staff allows me to check in at the business class counter for KLM since it's over three hours before departure. First impressions about Dresden Airport modern and spacious. I like it. After getting my bag thoroughly inspected by airport security, I'm airside. Dresden's departure hall is quite small, with only one restaurant and duty free shop. There are vending machines as well, but those are pretty expensive. Three euros for MMs? I'd rather let my sweet tooth starve. Anyway, there are plenty of places to sit, but there are only three or four power outlets that work in the entire terminal. Not to mention the fact that my adapter broke. Mmm, massage chairs. Pulling into gate 4 is Papa Hotel Echo X-Ray Alpha, a 10-year-old E-175 delivered new to KLM City Hopper in January of 2014. Let's get aboard to seat 16F. At each seat, there's a large tray table and a large seat back pocket. As for legroom, it's rather cramped, especially with the bag underneath the seat. Unlike on Lutz E-175s, KLM does not provide any power outlets or USB ports in its quote-unquote Euro business class or economy class seats. The only luxury you get is air vents and a rather stiff leather seat back. I can't imagine this seat back being comfortable for more than an hour or two. Here's our takeoff from runway 04 at the Hasdaq. Despite this flight being only an hour long, KLM serves a full snack and drink service. This is a very, very, very rare thing for any European airline to do. On most of their European flights, KLM serves a cheese and mayo sandwich, along with a hot or cold drink of your choice. I go for tomato juice. KLM features its own in-flight magazine called the Holland Herald which is updated monthly. Where's the page? Come on. This is what I've been looking for. KLM flies a menagerie of aircraft from the A330-200 and 777-300ER on long-haul routes down to the Embraer E-175 on short-haul routes. This is actually pretty useful. KLM features a map of its hub in Amsterdam Schiphol, as well as a map of Paris CDG for its partner airline Air France, which is part of the Air France KLM group. Soon, we start our descent into runway 18 right, the famous Polderbahn approach, the longest and furthest runway from Schiphol Airport's terminal.
Despite there being no power outlets on board and the seat back being pretty rough, I can't really complain since this E-175 flight was only an hour long. Because KLM operates its regional jets on flights less than two hours, this is not really a big deal. However, the legroom when items are stored underneath the seat is not that good even for me, someone who is a shorter person. I'd imagine taller people would have a hard time putting up with this bad legroom. I'd give this flight an 8 out of 10. Thank you for watching this video. If you'd like to see more content like this, please like, subscribe, and comment down below. I'm always open to suggestions on how to improve my videos. Have a good day or night wherever you are in the world. See ya.